good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight to the first annual State of the City Address for the City of Southlake. Um, first, as always, we're going to start with an invocation, a word of prayer from our city chaplain, Pastor Clay Reed. Pastor. Thank you. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we give thanks for the time we've set aside tonight to consider the city of South Lake. But Lord, we give thanks tonight that you consider us, that you care about us, that you love us, that you hear us when we talk to you. And so we pray that you would give us grace as a city, kindness as a city. And I pray that you would bless the team that leads our city, give them wisdom and help and peace and grace. And I pray that you would help us as citizens to love our neighbors and bless the people around us and that you would help our city continue to give favor and strength and blessing and bring peace. Lord, we also give thanks for rain. We pray that you would give us more and we give thanks for all that you're doing in our town. Bless our mayor tonight and others as they lead. We pray that you would bless them with wisdom and courage and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Pastor. If you could all now rise with me. We're joined by Lana Gillette uh, in the national, singing of the national anthem. Thank you, Lana. Thank you so much. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the You guys can have a seat. Thank you so much, Lana. That was absolutely beautiful. And thank you to Pastor Reed for opening us up with a word of prayer. My name is Mayor John Huffman. And once again, welcome to tonight's State of the City Address. And before I start, let me first say that it is raining in the city of Southlake. So I think that means that I can say I'm the mayor that broke the drought, uh, is, is, is what I'm thinking. Um, well, thank you again for joining us for this very, very special event. We appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to come and hear about the current state of our wonderful city. And let me assure you that the state of Southlake is strong. As mayor and council members, we have the opportunity to share a lot of the things that you'll hear tonight with all kinds of different events, with the Chamber of Commerce, with HOAs, with civic groups across the city, but not before tonight have we had an opportunity to deliver an address that will be filmed and broadcast to the whole city um, about what the state of this city actually is and all the wonderful wins and victories that city staff has been responsible for over the last year, as well as to establish a lot of the policy priorities that we will be operating under in the year to come. So tonight, along with Mayor Pro Tem Randy Williamson and Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Sean McCaskill, We'll be laying out as a city what, where we've been over the last year and where we're going in the year to come. And let me first start by offering just my word of thanks to all of you for allowing me to serve in this capacity. Being mayor of Southlake is the honor of my life, and I know all the rest of city council feels the exact same way. Uh, we will always serve you with integrity and hard work and a dedication to the idea that the people of Southlake deserve excellence from their public officials and from their city staff. So we're also joined here tonight by our colleagues on council, Councilwoman Kathy Talley. <laughs> Councilwoman
Councilwoman Amy torres Lab. And council members Robbins and Renell Smith are both in traffic. Um, due to the rain, I don't know if I've mentioned that one before, but thank you all for your amazing service to the city. Um, we, no, none of us could do this without, without you guys. Um, we're a wonderful team, and it is a pleasure to serve with you. And so with that, I'd like to welcome first to the podium our Deputy Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Sean McCaskill. Sean. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, Sean McCaskill, and I'm proud to be a member of the South Lake City Council and to serve as your Deputy Mayor Pro Tem. As many of you know, I was first elected to City Council in 2015, and uh, I've continued to thankfully be elected by the voters to serve in that capacity, and it's a privilege and an honor, it really is. Uh, with respect to the topics that I'm going to cover tonight, namely the local economy, school safety, and community events and community spirit, I can say that over my seven years, the state of the city on those issues has never been better. And we keep doing things the right way. And I think as we go through the presentation tonight, you'll see how invested we are in this community and how much we will will things to succeed. So with respect to the local economy, that is something, of course, that's been in the national news throughout 2022. Uh, the news this year has been marked by economic headwinds, supply chain issues, inflation and higher prices across the board, interest rate increases, and labor market challenges. And some say that the national economy is in a recession. Others say that the national economy is on its way to a recession. But be that as it may, it's also important to note that these issues this year have followed the unprecedented challenges to the economy, both nationally and locally, caused by COVID-19 starting in 2020. However, the good news I'm glad to report in Southlake is that our local economy has responded well to both the COVID-19 challenges starting in 2020, and also we've continued to perform well with the new challenges of the economy in 2022. When COVID-19 started in early 2020, the Southlake community, and I really mean the community, the local government, residents, local businesses, and volunteers all came together to lift up our community and our local economy. Back then in early 2020, the City Council created an economic recovery task force led by Chad Patton, John Huffman, and myself, along with Daniel Cortez and Ken Baker from the city, to bring together 25 local business leaders. We wanted to bring the experts people who owned businesses and led local businesses to give us input on ways that we could help the local economy, for lack of a better term, survive that time period. Their steady leadership and creative guidance proved invaluable as we navigated COVID-19. The speed at which we were able to operate was a key factor in our success. We would have task force meetings on Thursday afternoons, and the committee or task force would come up with ideas, recommendations, suggestions, and city council would vote on those ideas or suggestions the following Tuesday. So it was not a long debating process back and forth. We took action right away, and I think that really helped our local businesses. Some of the ideas, the big one being deregulation of our signs ordinance. Everyone in South Lake knows that we're very particular about our signs, but there's a time and place, right? So as COVID was happening and starting, we made the decision based on the recommendation of our local business owners and leaders that let's deregulate the sign ordinance. Let's let local businesses put out temporary signs that perhaps might not have passed, the, passed muster in the past, but allow them to advertise that they were in fact open, maybe under different conditions, food to go, margaritas to go, what have you, but everything was on the table as far as helping our local businesses. We also approved the use of sidewalks and parking spaces for outdoor shopping for people who felt more comfortable visiting their local businesses in that way. In addition, the City Council approved a $1 million grant program, grant program, not loans, uh, grants that did not have to be repaid, uh, with funds appropriated from our existing budget. We squeezed the budget to come up with this extra million dollars to help our local businesses with $10,000 grants, and we're thankful that a lot of local businesses that we know, we know the people who own those businesses and lead those businesses, that may have made a difference in them still being with us today. Long story short, South Lake's local economy made it through 2020 
with an increase in local sales tax revenue. We were projecting when we amended our budget in early 2020 that sales tax revenues would drop substantially. But in fact, the community came together, shopped local, and did their part, and our sales tax revenue went up in 2020 and has continued through 2021 and into 2022. The good news has continued into this year. Here's a few numbers in that regard. 2.7% unemployment rate for South Lake residents, a 95% retail occupancy rate, and just last week, we visited with the owners of Town Square, and there's a lot of new, exciting brands and retailers that are coming to Town Square in the very near future, some this year, some into the new year. But as we see some transition of some stores closing, we have been assured that there is stuff coming behind that. It's not a closing where that store will be dark. There are new things coming. I think you'll be excited to see those new stores coming to Town Square and throughout South Lake. Office occupancy rate, 85%, and we're up to 5 million square feet of office space in South Lake, which is a big number for a town our size. Also, on home values, the current average home value in South Lake is $1.8 million. And I think we all know that there's not a lot of supply on the market. In fact, homes last only on average 23 days on the market, which seems high to me, but that's the number we have. Uh, people from across the DFW Metroplex, across the state and across the country, are moving to South Lake to have their homes and to raise their families. The city of South Lake is proud of our partnership with the South Lake Chamber of Commerce, which continued to do its work during 2020 and through to 2022 with helping our local businesses, both new and established, to navigate all of these challenges over the past three years. The chamber is back to growing with new members and new activities. And in fact, local businesses in South Lake have performed better than their peers across the state and across the country. We're proud of that, and that's going to continue going forward. Now I'm going to shift gears to another very important topic, school safety. The most important job we have in this city, and our most fundamental promise to all of you, is that our local government has to keep our kids safe. That's job number one. That, of course, includes providing that same protection and safety to all the people who spend their days with our children, teachers, administrators, staff, coaches. They're all part of the Dragons team and Dragons family. As you all know, the city of South Lake has had a long and proud relationship and partnership with the Carroll Independent School District that has been at the forefront of school safety since 1989. Later on, the city of South Lake created the School Resource Officer Program. And since 2013, we have had trained South Lake police officers as SROs at every CISD campus, again, since 2013. This program is really the model for school safety initiatives across the state and across the country, and we're proud of that. In 2018, the City Council established a school safety task force to review what has been done in the past and what could be done going forward into the future. In 2018, we took another $550,000 out of the city budget, the existing budget, to have more SROs. The SROs are the strength of the SRO program. The people are what make a difference, and we wanted more. So we have more SROs uh, starting in 2018, and those SROs were placed at the Carroll Senior High School and Carroll High School because of the large footprints of those campuses and the large number of students at each campus. Also in 2018, some of that money went towards new safety measures at each campus, from technology to hardening of the buildings, all implemented to ensure the safety of our dragons. Following the events and tragedy in Uvalde earlier this year, Mayor Huffman reconvened that school safety task force, led by Police Chief James Brandon with Randy and myself, and representatives from CISD and Cam Bryan, the school board presidents here this evening. We have spent this summer going back to the drawing board and leaving no st stone unturned. We have spent the summer looking at every CISD campus, looking at the doors, the locks, the windows, security cameras, reviewing safety and security protocols and procedures with CISD to make sure that our schools are safe and ready for the kids to go back. We are proud to announce that the City Council has again approved, out of our existing budget, an additional $550,000 to add even more SROs to our team starting this school year. That's going to happen this year. More of a good thing is a good thing. 
on behalf of the city of South Lake and our police department, we can promise you that our SROs are trained and prepared to act immediately, immediately, and face any dangers or threats to our schools head on to protect our dragons. We promise you that. And our police department and SROs will deliver on that promise. <laughs> Finally, for my topics, community events and community spirit. Of course, over the last several years, community events and the community spirit that comes with it have taken uh, a little bit of an impact due to COVID-19. And some events have had to be canceled. Some have had to been restructured for public safety and public health reasons. But thankfully, in 2022, we can report that we expect to have more community events in South Lake than in any other year, pre-COVID and going way pre-COVID, including the usual favorites such as Art in the Square, Celebrate South Lake, Stars and Stripes, Oktoberfest, and Home for the Holidays. Cultural events, concerts, and charitable fundraisers are happening each and every month in South Lake. One citywide favorite. Uh, it's coming up in a couple months. The Wally Fest is hosted by the South Lake Foundation, friends of ours, and they've done a great job with that event and grown in every year, including through COVID. We have some members of the South Lake Foundation here tonight, and we thank them for their work on behalf of our city. We're also thankful that as we come out of COVID, that more and more of our kids are getting back involved in youth sports and other activities for our kids and young adults. That's important. We have record enrollment and participation in our youth sports leagues, including Miracle League Baseball and Special Olympics. And the people that lead our community services department and the volunteers throughout our community have made that happen. Thankfully, as we kick off a new school year, we have the annual Dragons Community Pep Rally at Dragon Stadium on Saturday, August 20th, starting at 6 p.m. This event is organized by the Dragons football team moms and will be a great opportunity to not only look back and celebrate the championships and accomplishments of our Dragons last school year, but as we get ready to cheer on the Dragons in the new school year. It's going to be a great year in Southlake, and we can't wait to share more of the news about more of the events that are coming, which will lift us all up and lift up our spirit. Now for remarks on capital projects and our public safety department, I'm going to welcome my friend Randy Williamson. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Councilmember McCaskill, and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as Sean said, my name is Randy Williamson, and uh, I serve as your mayor pro tem currently, and uh, also as the president of the South Lake Parks Development Corporation, and I'm honored and uh, humbled by those opportunities, so thank you. I've been on council since 2013, and what I can say, just like Sean shared, is that in those uh, eight or nine years, I've never been more confident in uh, where our city has been and where we are going. I feel great about South Lake. You know, one of the most important things we do, though, as a city is uh, we plan for, we execute, and we uh, manage large capital projects. You know, from roads to water lines to parks, public buildings, budgeting, and managing those expenditures, it takes a whole lot of staff time. And I can tell you, we have without a doubt, the absolute best staff in the state of Texas. So if you would join me in applauding their work. Our city manager, Shauna Yelverton, is here on the front row supporting us tonight, and she leads a fantastic team. So thank you, Shauna, for, for everything that you do. Um, you know, but one of the most critical things that we do on council is to make sure that we get this right, that we follow staff's lead, that we dig in, we investigate, we ask the hard questions, and we make important decisions. Um, over the last year, we've made very significant progress on a number of capital expenditures in the city. First, drum roll please, we have finally been able to complete one of the most visible capital projects in recent history. I feel like you guys know what this is, but that's, it, it is, it is the very important widening of Whitechapel Boulevard, so let's hear from that. So this project was started in 2019. This project involved the installation of a roundabout at White's Chapel Boulevard. Um, it also, uh, the, like I said, the, white, the roundabout was at White Chapel and Highland, and the widening of White Chapel from two to four lanes, all the way from 114 to 1709. It included miles of new waterways, sewer, and storm sewer lines to make sure the roadway is modernized for current use. 
But we will be having a ribbon cutting tomorrow. We have the question, is it done? Join us at 8.30 tomorrow morning at the uh, Carroll High School, not the senior high, but at the Carroll High School. And uh, you'll be able to see where kind of the festivities uh, are occurring, but it'll be on the South Drive of Carroll High School. So we'd love for you all to join us for that official ribbon cutting. But we've also made significant progress on, port on important 114 front frontage road projects at uh, Dove and T.W. King. It's been a complex project involving the city of South Lake, the uh, Texas Department of Transportation, and Tarrant County. And we're really thankful to have such strong relationships with these organizations to be able to get these types of projects completed in a quality fashion. These are going to serve our citizens now and well into the future. Under construction are also a number of water and sanitary sewer projects uh, throughout the city, which will improve these important city services, like I said, for current and future residents. Amazingly, cash funding for these construction projects made up 74%. Think about that for a minute. Cash funding making up 74% of the total project costs for fiscal year 22. That's unheard of in municipal government. And I would say we have our staff, we have our current council, but we also have past councils who, and mayors who have set that standard, which we continue to, uh, to embrace uh, with our current council. Our commitment to the taxpayers of South Lake has been and will always be to manage these capital projects in a fiscally responsible manner, and that's just what we've done. So as we look ahead to the future, we have a number of other important capital projects to prepare for. Sean got to talk about a lot of fun things in his. You know, I'm talking about sewers and water lines and so forth, <laughs> but I am going to transition to one fun topic here. Really, though, one of the fun parts of our job is, on city council is to plan for parks and recreational facilities around town. Our citizens enjoy an incredible quality of life, due in part to the beautiful green spaces and these world-class recreational facilities. Since I've been on council, we've invested tens of millions of dollars in parks and recreation, but we're not done yet. Over the next few years, we'll be investing in projects like the new gorgeous Carillon Park, public and open space, which will include a state-of-the-art South Lake Library and a performing arts center in the, are in the plans. Uh, so this fall, we'll also be breaking ground on what uh, our mayor, Mayor Huffman, has memorably dubbed the Taj Mahal of pickleball complexes. Yeah, it is going to be amazing. And just so you know, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in the nation. And we are thrilled in South Lake to be able to offer this amenity to our citizens. As we look at citizen surveys over the last few years, this has been the number one request in the recreational community is to uh, bring pickleball. And I see a lot of head nods in the audience. The, the pickleball crowd is a serious crowd. They take their sport seriously, and we're excited to be able to bring this project to them. Um, we're also planning, uh, or in the planning stages, of a brand new state-of-the-art public works center on Brumlow Avenue. That's not quite as exciting as pickleball, but it is very important. I will say, though, the men and women of our public works department are some of the hardest working folks on city, on city staff, and we're proud to be able to construct a facility for that department. And it, you don't really have to go very deep in your memory to think about what happened uh, just a, about a year ago with the incredible freeze, Snowmageddon, that we had here. And I will tell you that the heroes, without a doubt, of our city during that event are the women, uh, men and women of our uh, public works. They are the ones who worked hard to literally thaw out valves and get water flowing again and to do everything they could to keep your basic services going. So they are an incredible, incredible group. Let me shift gears uh, just for a moment, though, to DPS and public safety. Another way that we're blessed as a city is that we benefit from strong public safety programs. South Lake is a safe city. We have a low crime rate. Our police department is a strong organization proving repeatedly that the men and women who serve our city, they do so with professionalism and integrity. And these words aren't just platitudes. Their outstanding work has been independently, independently verified time and time again through the accreditation program to which they have subjected themselves for more than 20 years. The Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies has honored the South Lake Police Department with its highest level of achievement, and that achievement level is gold standard accreditation with excellence. This honor has been in place for seven years, since 2015. That's just absolutely incredible. But it's not just the police. Our fire department, Chief Starr, 
is one of only 11 agencies in Texas to be accredited by the Commission on Fire Accreditation International, which is a huge honor as well. Both of these agencies subject themselves to rigorous assessments to ensure service excellence with strong performance, even with the constant threat of adverse conditions. But there's one thing I want to make sure everybody is crystal clear on. In Southlake, we will always back the blue. Always, without exception. <laughs> Sean talked about this some, but anyone with kids in the school also knows about our school resource program. It's second to none. It's been in place since 1989. The city partnered with local school districts to provide police officers for every school. Today, we have the present SROs in every school in Southlake, and as Sean shared, we anticipate adding four more officers in the coming months to continue providing protection to our children. But along that note, their work, their work was recently highlighted when the Texas Association of School Resource Officers awarded our police department with the statewide SRO Agency of the Year Award. That's incredible. <laughs> In addition, this year, the statewide association presented one of our officers with the SRO of the Year Award. So please join me in recognizing Officer Brett Roberson. <laughs> Thank you, Officer Roberson, for your service to our city's youngest residents. We sure appreciate you. While school safety is not the department's only concern, it is a priority. It's just one example of our police chief, Chief Brandon, and policymakers, how we've worked together to closely uh, find real solutions to modern threats. Public safety represents a fundamental commitment to our citizens, and in Southlake, our public safety initiatives are strong. Thank you all for the opportunity to serve. I appreciate the nearly nine years, years that I've been able to serve on council, and uh, I have enjoyed every moment of it and look forward to continuing and I appreciate all of your support. So let me turn it back over to Mayor Huffman to uh, bring us home. Well, thank you so much, Randy, and thank you to Sean, you guys, your, your leadership and your counsel through this process. And throughout the time I've been mayor, have been invaluable, and I appreciate it. You guys really are looking at the best of the best up here, and we thank them for their service. Um, so we're going to turn to another very, very exciting topic, and that's taxes and budget. Now, most of the time when a politician mentions taxes, people get a little nervous. But I do have some good news for you tonight. So one of the most imp important and critical fiduciary duties that we have as elected officials uh, is to be f excellent fiduciaries of your taxpayer dollars. Um, and a fiduciary, definitionally, is someone that puts his or her interests below that of the taxpayers that they serve. And that's critical that everybody on council understands that, and they do. And they understand it, and they take it very, very seriously. But being fiscally responsible is more than just a campaign slogan. It means always delivering excellent city services that are also very efficient, because ultimately that's how we take care of your taxpayer dollars. Because in the end, municipal government really is a service business. We build roads, we maintain water lines, we keep parks beautiful, we inspect construction projects, we put out fires, we put the bad guys in jail. And the city of Southlake, in my opinion, does it better than just about anyone else. And, but don't take my word for it, you can take the word of Kalia, as Randy mentioned, who has accredited our police department with the very rare gold standard for seven years in a row. You can take the word of the Dallas Business Journal, who named in 2018 our CFO, Sharon Jackson, as their CFO of the year for governmental entities. Or you could take the word of the International City County Management Association, who last year awarded Southlake its Strategic Leadership and Governance Award for Performance Excellence. And the awards don't stop there. We have many, many across the uh, across city staff that we get to honor every year and bring them up to city council and give them a proclamation, tell them how wonderful they are. Um, it's one of the best things that we do. And across, because across the country, people are taking note of how this city does its business and how it takes care of its taxpayer dollars. Uh, and, and in that, in many other ways, the city continues to make us very, very proud. And by the way, no state of the city would be complete without recognizing a woman who neither asks for nor particularly appreciates any public displays of gratitude. 
which makes it all the more fun to embarrass her. So once again, could you all give a round of applause to the best city manager in the business, Ms. Shauna Yelverton. So that's being physically responsible, being efficient and effective with your taxpayer dollars and the services that we provide. But being fiscally responsible also means being prudent in our use of taxpayer-supported debt. So the city of Southlake, as I mentioned, is blessed to have the financial leadership of Ms. Sharon Jackson, uh, and she's done a wonderful job in managing our taxes and our debt. Um, you may not know that the city pays cash for almost every capital project we undertake. In fact, as Randy mentioned, 74% in FY22 of our capital projects came from cash, which once, once again is very unique in the municipal service world. Uh, and when we do take on property tax debt, we aggressively repay that debt. In fact, property tax supported debt per capita has been reduced from $3,500 in 2010 to just $768 per capita now in 2022, and we're very proud of that. And on top of all of that, because of the robust economy and fantastic financial management, the city of Southlake has a AAA bond rating from all three ratings agencies, one of only two cities across Texas with that designation. What that means is people are clamoring and competing to buy our debt. So when we do have to issue bonds, your interest rate that ultimately is borne by the taxpayers is as low as humanly possible. And that's because of the financial leadership of Ms. Sharon Jackson and Ms. Halberton. And we thank you for that. And finally, being fiscally respons responsible means that as everyone's property tax valuations continue to rise, we must continue to decrease the city's property tax rate year after year to deliver real tax relief to our residents. When I first took office in 2015, our tax rate was 46.2 cents with a 12% homestead exemption. And Mayor Hill immediately set a policy of tax relief and we took action every single year. First, we raised the homestead exemption to 20% which is the statutory maximum, and then we got to work lowering the property tax rate. Now, all of you may be aware that the effective tax rate is a rate at which the government, the local government taxing agency, would have to set the rate to collect the same amount of taxes this year as it did the year before, basically to flatten out our rising valuations. Well, for three budget years in a row, your city council has delivered a tax rate below the effective tax rate, which means that the average homeowner in, in Southlake pays less to the city in property taxes than they did three years ago. And I am very excited to announce for the first time that in FY 2022 or 2023, which we will be approving in September, the Southlake City Council will once again cut your property tax rate below the effective rate, delivering much needed uh, blow for, the, uh, for pr further property tax reduction and delivering more of your tax dollars back into your pocket. Now, of course, we all know that we're all paying more for, to the Tarrant Appraisal District every year. Um, as most taxing entities are not able to reduce the tax rate as low as us. After all, you only spend 16 to 18% of your taxes in going to the city. Um, but it is our commitment that we will continue to do everything we can as a city to deliver real tax relief wherever we can. And we will continue to aggressively repay our debt and maintain our exemplary AAA bond rating and we will continue to set the standard for excellence and efficiency in all of the city services that we deliver to you because that's what the citizens of Southlake deserve. So as you've heard now for half an hour, the city has had some very impactful wins over the last year. And as we look to the next year, we have some very important priorities and challenges in front of us that present both challenges to overcome and opportunities to thrive. And as we look forward, we are facing some truly uncertain economic times across the country, across the state, and across the world. Southlake's economy, thankfully, remains strong, but domestic inflation is on the rise. Global supply chain is a mess, to say the least. And the ruling party in Washington continues to print money we don't have for services and giveaways we don't need. There's precious little we can do here in Southlake to strengthen the global economy, but we will do what we can wherever we can. We will cut your taxes and deliver city services with excellence and efficiency. We will encourage smart economic growth and support our small businesses that make our economy thrive. And we will be an example to the communities around us 
an example of financial stability and fiscal discipline, because that's what you deserve. And over the next year, we will also be making some very important decisions about some big capital projects. It is my goal that by this time next year, we will have a solid plan and be moving forward with your new library and performing arts center in Carillon Park. It, we will have a heavy emphasis in this project and others with public-private partnerships. And we want future generations in Southlake to be able to enjoy a state-of-the-art library and be enriched by the performing arts right here at home. In the next year, we will also be moving forward with plans, as Randy mentioned, for a new public work center that will serve that department for years to come. And by early next spring, I am certainly looking forward to enjoying uh, a game on the new pickleball courts. It's the fastest growing sport in the country, as Randy mentioned. And it's actually really, really fun. I got to admit it. It's, uh, it's, it's a blast. And I can't wait to break ground on that facility as well. And over the next year, we have other important groundbreakings, including the Carillon Park groundbreaking. Uh, former Mayor John Terrell and his partners are here tonight, and we thank them for their dedication to this project. It was not easy. Uh, nothing about what you did was easy, uh, including dealing with the city, I would mention. Uh, but we thank you for your steadfast leadership and your desire to uh, deliver on the commitment to the residents of Carillon and the residents of Southlake. And we cannot wait to join you with hard hats and shovels and break that ground officially. So over the next years, we will no doubt face challenges, some we can anticipate and some we cannot. Uh, it's one of the joys of uh, city management and emergency management. We don't know what's around the bend. If you remember, over the last two years, we have faced two historic, unprecedented crises, neither of which we could have predicted even two weeks before they hit. COVID in 2020 and Snowmageddon in 2021. And we saw in both of these crises the robustness of the emergency management system uh, as staff quickly activated and implemented emergency plans that we hoped we'd never have to use. But they were ready all the same, and the city rose to the challenges of those times in service to the citizens of Southlake. And we saw in both of those crises the resiliency of our economy as our small businesses battled to survive the COVID crisis and keep their doors open, their staff employed, and their customers safe. And we saw in both of these crises the resiliency of the Southlake spirit as our community banded together to support each other and support small businesses however we could. We pray that in the coming year we won't face another historic crisis, but if we do, rest assured that your city leadership is ready, and we will do whatever it takes to deliver city services with excellence even in the most trying of times, because that's what Southlake deserves. So I want to thank you all for coming tonight. It means a lot that you got out in the rain. Thank you for watching, if you're watching this online. I hope you can see, like I do, that the state of Southlake is strong and battle-tested and ready for the challenges and the opportunities of the next year. And with prayer to Almighty God for guidance and for wisdom, we will do everything in our power to keep it that way. It is my solemn pledge as your mayor that in everything we do and say, Southlake will stand apart. In a world where politics are defined by corruption and greed, Southlake will stand for integrity and public trust. In a world where almost no government at any level lives within its means, Southlake will stand for tax cuts and fiscal responsibility. And in a world that is increasingly mired in evil, Southlake will stand for good. I thank you all. God bless you, and God bless this wonderful city we're a part of. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you.